Uh, greetings. Uh, my name is Eric Juma Wabwile. I am a GIS expert in charge of uh, biodiversity ecosystems. And uh, I'll be taking you through the process of updating the protected and conserved areas data in the protected planet uh, databases. So uh, the very first uh, uh, topic we're going to cover is uh, preparing the WDPA or WDOECM schema. Uh, WDPA in full is World Database on Protected Areas, uh, on protected areas. and the WDOECM in full is the World Database on Other Effective Area-Based Conservation Measures. I want us to prepare a schema that you can use to prepare your data and update the, the two databases that I, I have just uh, mentioned. So first I want to mention that uh, at the Regional Center of Excellence for Eastern and Southern African region, uh, we actually work with uh, UNEP WCMC to update the protected and conserved areas data in the World Database on Protected Areas and the World Database on Other Effective Area-Based Conservation Measures in Eastern and Southern African region. And uh, therefore, uh, that diagram you're seeing there just shows the flow of information. And after we have updated the, the, the protected planet databases, we pull the information from the protected planet databases to our geoportals. Uh, in the previous class, I, I, I taught you how to pull data from our geo database to the ArcGIS online. And uh, the reason why we did that is because we the data that we have in our database and the one that is in the protected planet is the same. So allow me to... Uh, uh, go further to step two, uh, the linkage between RCA and the protected planet, uh, which I have just mentioned. And as I told you, our WDPA, uh, World Database on Protected Areas, and the World Database on Other Effective Area-Based Conservation Measures, are the two databases that are used to provide data uh, for the headline indicator of the KMGBF Target 3. Uh, the, the, the headline indicator is the coverage of the protected areas and the OECMs. Um, let us uh, take some time and understand the WDPA data structure. Uh, the WDPA data structure consists of, uh, of three layers. The first layer is the spatial data. The spatial data consists of polygons and points. Then you have tabular information. Tabular information uh, consists of the attribute data. These are descriptive information of uh, the protected areas. And the third, info third layer is the source information. This is the information of the data provider. So um, the WDPA data structure uh, has that spatial component. And the spatial component, uh, which include both the, both the polygons and the points, um, the polygons can come in two parts. Uh, for example, if you have a protected area which uh, is divided into two by a road or a feature, you can actually uh, provide this data as, uh, as two polygons. Uh, there will be two polygons that are multi-part, but uh, they form one, one record. Uh, you can also provide the points, two points that are connected. Uh, for example, if you have not mapped these uh, protected areas, you can get the, the, the centroids of the two uh, polygons, and then we will use the two uh, centroids as the, the spatial data for, for the protected and conserved areas. Uh, in the WDPA, uh, uh, the information that we record have uh, actually uh, 29 descriptors. These are 29 fields uh, of, of the information of the protected areas, uh, which I want to go into, but uh, these fields are uh, categorized in form of, uh, of minimum and, and complete. Minimum refers to the information that is mandatory. So if you're providing the information and uh, you see the, min, the, the, the fresh minimum, uh, this is information that we must provide for, for the team to update the WDPA. So uh, this information can be found in the WDPA data manual, uh, which we will share with you. Uh, so just go through the manual and see the kind of uh, attrib attributes that we collect and take note of the minimum because your data cannot be updated if you have not provided the minimum uh, uh, attributes. Uh, 
the next one, uh, I want us to uh, go to, to uh, the reason why we prepare the data schema. Uh, first, a data schema is, uh, is uh, a blueprint that defines how data is organized, uh, structured, and related within a database or a data pipeline. And the reason why uh, a data schema is prepared is to ensure that there is data consistency. Uh, so it uh, helps in maintaining data consistency. It helps to minimize errors uh, because, you know, when you are, you are defining a, a data structure, sometimes you can, uh, you can, you can um, confuse the data types. Uh, it helps in easy data updates because it provides a structured way of, of preparing data. It helps in enhanced collaboration. Uh, it helps to standardize how data is prepared and therefore it's easy to collaborate. It helps to optimize data access because this is uh, standardized the data that is uh, comparable across uh, uh, different uh, uh, databases. Uh, it helps uh, for efficient data processing and it also helps in data segregation, among other benefits. Um, WDP data schema in this case is uh, the schema that, uh, uh, that um, is used to, to, to prepare WDP data. Uh, it, has, it follows the WDP data standards, and uh, we shall be looking at uh, how this schema can be, can be uh, prepared. So uh, we are going to explore the various uh, uh, ways of preparing the WDPA data schema. And the very first step is that uh, uh, for you to prepare the WDPA data schema, um, we have one hosted on our, data, on our website, but we can prepare yours and, and use it to prepare your data. So first you can go to the Protected Planet uh, website and uh, then uh, go and explore the protected areas and the OECMs uh, data. Then you can search for your country. If it's uh, Kenya or Uganda or South Africa, search for your country and you'll get the results. Uh, then click on your country to uh, open up uh, the information of your country. Then on the top right corner, you have the download button. Uh, you can download the file your database. And once the, the database is, 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 is downloaded, uh, of course you'll be, you can only download this database. Uh, if you want to use it for non-commercial use. If you want to use it for commercial use, then you can, you can go and use the IBAT option of downloading the data because uh, WD, Protected Planet does not allow uh, downloading data for, for commercial use. And uh, if you're using this data for, for a report or a research, make sure that you cite, uh, you cite the, the platform correctly. So uh, once you have, uh, you have downloaded your data, you can open it in any uh, GIS software. Uh, for this session, we shall be using ArcGIS. So you can open your ArcGIS and, 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 and create a project. And once you create your project, you can um, go and add your data. Uh, as I told you, the, the WDPA data structure has uh, three layers. It has the polygon layer, it has the point, and it has the source uh, table. So uh, in, in this uh, uh, particular session, we are only using two layers. We are using the polygon and the point layer. So just add the points and the polygon layer. Uh, then you can go and uh, uh, review, review the data that we have added. You can check uh, the attributes of the data that you have just added. And then uh, what you want to do here is that you want to delete all uh, the features in that uh, file your database uh, so that it remains empty. So uh, make sure that you, you select all the features. Uh, we shall be looking into the various methods of selection in a feature class. But for today, when you open um, a, 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 an attribute table, you can easily click on the switch button there to select all the features. And once they are selected, uh, the delete buttons will become active. Uh, we have a delete button both in the, in the attribute uh, uh, table window and also in the edit tab. Uh, click on the delete button and all the features will be deleted. Once you delete your features, make sure that you save. So under the edit tab, there is a save button. Click on the save uh, to make sure that you save uh, uh, the changes. Uh, you have just uh, deleted everything and now you remain with an empty feature class or an empty layer that has uh, the defined fields but empty, uh, empty records. So uh, these 
file or this layer that you have just, uh, you have just deleted uh, the features can be used as a schema. Um, after saving your, your, your changes, I, will, I want us to just uh, rename, rename the feature class, the one that you, 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 you have deleted the features from, uh, to, uh, to a schema so that uh, you will know that it is a schema and not a data that uh, you can use. Uh, and uh, I, you can do, use the same procedure to also uh, delete the data in the points feature. And once everything is deleted and renamed, uh, you have just created a data schema. Congratulations. Uh, in our next class, I'll show you how to, to use this schema to prepare data for, for WDP uh, data update. Thank you so much. I want to ask you to go to the RCA community if you have any question, uh, if you need any kind of clarification, just go to the RCA community and you will get help there. Thank you.